Well, hi there. Uh, welcome to the SDVC, the Social Distancing Virtual Classroom. <laughs> I just kind of made that up. It's kind of crazy. I don't like it, though. I don't like it. I, I would much rather have you with me and, and us actually doing this. This this SDVC, it ain't for me. SDVC, it ain't for me. But well, you know what? That's okay. That's okay. We're going to make the best of it, so help me. We're still going to have fun. I call this lesson the Zentangle Easter Egg Hunt. It starts off by grabbing your sheet of paper and drawing as best a oval as you can. We're going to create an Easter egg with Zentangled patterned. Um, inside of it. So, so if you want to know a little bit more about Zentangles, this is a really nice and intricate art in and of itself. I have a video, if you haven't already seen it, um, that talks specifically about that art form. I'll put the link to the description in the description box, the link to that video to in the description box. And uh, you can go and check that out. But um, here today, we're going to go ahead and start off with an oval. And then we're going to section that oval off. You're going to have four sections um, of that oval that we're going to use to create our Zentangle patterns in. Now, you can make more sections if you like. You can make less sections if you like. It's kind of all up to you and your creativity. Now, one thing I've noticed about Zentangling, um, it builds. The patterns build. Like you may start with well, one zigzag line and then you think, well, wait a minute, that's not enough. I think I need to add more to it to create a little bit more visual interest. Like sometimes it's hard to know when you're done with the pattern you, you you keep adding you keep making those artistic decisions you're like oh man no 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 it's too bare right here there's not enough right here let me add a little bit more oh my gosh i put too much on that side let me try to balance it out on the other side yeah i noticed that about zentangles and, and about art in general um it's hard to know when you're done that's kind of tricky to say I'm finished with this. You, you have to kind of evaluate what you've done. Look and see where you can add things. Look and see where you can take things away maybe. And, and, and create the best pattern possible. Take each section at a time. Each section at a time. One by one. And create a pattern in each one. Don't go on to the next section until you've said, I'm done. Until you're satisfied with the previous section. And then go ahead to the next section and do the exact same thing. Start with a line. Start with a shape. And keep going until you are satisfied with artistically satisfied with everything that's there. Yeah. Oh, once you're finished with all of the designs and you call it done, go back and grab yourself a Sharpie marker or a black crayon, even up even a Crayola, a black Crayola marker, some type of something you can use to trace your designs. It's, it's like we are making it permanent. These are the lines that I like. And then the lines you don't like, don't trace those because we'll go back with uh, an eraser and erase away all of those mistakes. Yeah, yeah. In art, we make mistakes. You know that as well as I. Um, that's why we have the little rubber thing on the back of the pencil, right? Yeah, we use that. But this is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. Uh, decide which lines you want to keep. Make those permanent and then go back and get rid of of all of the mistakes now once that's done the last thing about zentangle patterns you need to know the one of its defining characteristics i think one of the most important things um is you have to decide what part of your pattern you want to color in 
and what parts of your pattern you want to leave blank. That's right. In Zentangle patterns, there's always this play between what you're coloring in. A technical term for that is the positive space and what you're leaving white in this case. Um, and they call that the negative space. There's this relationship, this back and forth, this balance that you have to strike between positive and negative space. Decide what you want to stay white. You have to have just as much white as you have black to have a really successful Zentangled pattern. And so, yeah, guys, uh, take a minute, check mine out, uh, use it as a guide when you're deciding on your positive and negative uh, space balance. And uh, you have nothing but time. like we have plenty. <laughs> um, so take your time and uh, do your best and let's see how it comes out. And now that we've gotten our Easter egg completely and totally finished with our Zentangled patterns, we can go ahead and cut it out. Uh, try to do your best to stay along the lines that you sketched for yourself when you're cutting. And then if you haven't already, you can go back with that eraser and clean up your artwork. And that's it, guys. You can call it done after this final step. Uh, this is what we're doing today, and I would like you now to go and have fun.